In the last section of the course, we added more functionality to our search application by implementing highlights, sorting, and aggregations. The last feature that we will be adding in this section is autocomplete. Our autocomplete component will display multi-word suggestions for the search terms in the search box, as well as previewing the results from those suggested words so that users can jump directly to a given book before they have even executed a full search. Being able to show users relevant results even before they have finished typing in their query reassures them that our application has the content that they need. It also allows users to navigate to the content quicker because they don't have to be redirected to a full search page first. The first Elasticsearch component that we're going to be looking into for our autocomplete setup is the term suggester. The term suggester looks at the terms in the provided query and returns alternatives for each term. For instance, if we search for a word that is not in our index, in this case, pearl, like the kind found in the ocean, the top suggestion that Elasticsearch returns is pearl, the programming language, a much more suitable keyword. Let's take a second to look at the syntax. First, we have our suggest object, and within that, we specify a name for our suggestions. We call it autocomplete, but it could be any arbitrary name. Inside of our group name, we have specified the text that Elasticsearch should use as the basis for its suggestions, and then which field should be used to generate the returned values. In this case, we're using the title.basic field. If we input additional words, such as Drupal website with Drupal misspelled, now the options returned from the suggester include separate objects for each term. But looking at our misspelled term Drupal autocomplete suggests Drupal, no options are returned for a website because that term exists in our database. Whether or not a suggestion is returned can be controlled by the suggest underscore mode setting. The available modes include always, which returns any available suggestions, popular, which returns only words that are more frequent than the term provided, and missing, which only returns a suggestion if the original term doesn't have any matches in the given field. For the purposes of our search engine, we are more concerned with how often a word occurs, so we will go with popular. So far, we've been looking at individual terms. The term suggester gave us the tools to suggest alternate terms if an individual word is misspelled or incomplete. What happens if we need to check a longer string containing multiple terms? In that situation, we might want to use the phrase suggester. The phrase suggester has some additional settings, such as the prefix length. By setting it to 2, this means that the first two characters in the input have to match for a suggestion to be returned. So if we search for Django, it will return Django, but not if we type an R instead of a D at the beginning of the word. Using a prefix length of two or more speeds up the analysis process and won't really affect our application because misspellings are more likely to happen in the middle or end of a word. Another setting that we're using is the main word length, which means that each term has to be more than three characters in order for it to be evaluated by the suggester. Now that we have a query that will allow us to return suggestions, we can implement it into our search application. We'll do that in the next video.